in a cozy stable on a starry night, something special happened. Mary and Joseph smiled as they welcomed their baby boy into the world. Animals gathered around, filled with curiosity and joy. The night sky sparkled with excitement. Shepherds and wise men came to honor the king. That first Christmas in the manger, love, hope, joy, and peace were born. The greatest gift the world has ever known, baby Jesus, the Savior. Good morning, everyone. It's a shame people don't go to church anymore. Um, really excited that you all are here. We're getting more chairs to fill this up. Um, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us today. This is an incredibly special day in the life of the church. Scott's going to be doing our offering later and going to be talking about the, um, the, cutting, the ribbon cutting for the Mission Center. But I just want you all to know that this is our very last Sunday with this wall up. Um, yeah, right. It's... Um, it's been like 14 months, and you all have been so gracious and, and flexible and accommodating, um, and I think this may be the most people we've crammed in this room, so it's fitting that we try to do that on the very last Sunday. And so um, thank you for worshiping with us. Uh, thank you to those who are worshiping with us online. We want to know um, who you are that you're worshiping with us, so if you would like, comment, share, whatever feed you're on, um, that would mean so much so that we can connect and still be in community together. We also want to pray with and for you, and so if you go to our website, mcfarlandumc.org, scroll to the bottom of that page, um, there's a prayer request button so that we can be in prayer together. For everyone here um, on site in the room, we have our black friendship pads, hopefully people are starting to pass those down. Uh, it's a great way for us to connect with you so that we can grow in our faith, and for you to connect with those you're worshiping with in the same row and connect and fellowship. Um, I'm going to talk over the moving of chairs for a little bit, um, but don't worry, my sh sermon is really short today, and so I'm making up for that. Um, we have Christmas Eve Eve coming up, so on December 23rd, that is when Modern Worship is going to have our Christmas Eve service, and so that is on Saturday, December 23rd at 6 p.m. in this room. Um, I know that on Christmas Eve, people love being in the sanctuary, and they love that traditional service. I also know people love to travel and go to maybe uh, grandma or granddad's church. And so if you want to worship here at McFarland before you travel or have that Christmas Eve worship with your modern family, I would love if you would join us on the 23rd right here in this room. And then, of course, we do have any of our uh, Christmas Eve offerings on Sunday, Sunday. We have our 4 p.m. family service. We have our 7 and 11 o'clock candlelight services. Um, this is truly a special time of year here at the church. And so I hope that you can uh, be here, be a part of it, because you being here makes it all the more special. Now I want to invite us to all rise together as we join in um, our candle lighting liturgy. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. And we lit the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting. Like the Israelites who wander through the wilderness, waiting to come into the promised land, we wait for the coming of the joy of ages. We wait for the day where we can join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on each of us. We light this candle of joy. On this day, we remember the Spirit who breathes joy into our lives. Let us worship.
live in an authentic way that says that you are present, that you are Emmanuel, that you have come at this time, in this season, and on this day.
want to invite all of our children forward for our children's message with Austin. All right, come on up. I need everybody to come and to sit close. You get to be a part of what I think will be my greatest children's message. I am super excited. Come on, come close. We've got to kind of scoot in. There's a lot of us today. Okay. So, when we sing, when we're singing carols or we're singing in worship, anytime we sing about God and those things, we are making a joyful noise. You guys get to make a joyful noise very often. What are some places you guys get to make a joyful noise? Choir, you make a joyful noise in choir. In church, you make a joyful noise in church. Ruthie. In theater, you make a joyful noise in theater. Yeah. At McFarland, you make a joyful noise at McFarland. In your house, do you guys ever make joyful noises in your house? Is it joyful for your parents? Yeah. At concerts sometimes. How many of you are OU fans? Nice. Okay. How many of you have been to an OU football game? What happens when we score a touchdown? Everybody screams and they go crazy. They cheer really loud. Well, there is a joyful noise that we're going to make this morning. I haven't done this ever in a children's message before. I want you guys all to shout with me, okay? We're going to shout. I want us to shout so loud that the people over in the sanctuary hear the joyful noise we're making. Are you excited? Are you ready? We're going to shout the word Noel, which was in that last song we sang. You guys know what Noel means? It means Christmas, yes. What? It's French, yes. What does it mean? Born on Christmas. It means born on Christmas. We're singing about Christ being born on Christmas. So we're going to shout Noel as loud as we can and make a joyful noise. Are you excited? Are you ready? Don't make me the only one who's shouting. I'm going to count down from three. I'm going to go three, two, one. And then we're going to shout Noel and we're going to make a joyful noise. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah! Great. Okay, I think everybody in Fen Hall should shout Noel. What do you think? Let's do it. Okay, everybody now. Three, two, one. Yeah! How awesome was that? I will never get to do that ever again, probably. I'll probably be told on Monday, no more shouting in service. But I am so excited that you guys made a joyful noise with me this morning. And if you're going to be with us for the rest of the service or you're going to go over to children's worship, you guys get to continue to make a joyful noise, whether you're singing carols or sharing in time with your friends. So let's pray, and then we'll, uh, we'll get back to making a joyful noise. God, we're thankful for the coming of Christ, for which we get to make a joyful noise. God, that joyful noise that was same in the same way made to the shepherds in that field. God, that was, that was given through a star to the wise men. God, that is resounding around the earth for all to hear. Let us join in making that joyful noise. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. I want to uh, take just a quick second. Let's thank the band. <laughs> I can't go for it, can I? Let's thank the band. Uh, you guys are awesome. Seriously, I, I just, I kind of felt for you. Like we were going to sing whether you were or not. It was I'm sorry, awesome. Guys. Uh, I, <laughs> do not apologize. Uh, I'm Scott Meyer. I'm director of missions and evangelism, and uh, I get to wear two hats this morning. Number one is director of missions. Uh, as you know, tonight or this afternoon, right after this worship service, we're ribbon cutting our new mission center which on the first floor will house our um, uh, food, McFarland Food Pantry. And I want to say to the worshiping community in modern worship, and specifically to Pastor Trey, thank you. Thank you for over a year of sharing your space so we can continue to meet the needs of thousands, thousands of people in our community, in our county, who would not have food and enough resources to take care of their obligations if it weren't for what this church does. What you have done has been absolutely incredible. We have a number of our food pantry volunteers here, and they are, are in, in worship with us today. I think I'm gonna ask them to stand, not so you can recognize them, but so that they can recognize this worshiping community. So if you volunteer at the food pantry or mobile food pantry, will you just stand? And we just wanna say thank you to everybody uh, in this worship service. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you. 
it's a great, uh, a, a great collaboration. The second thing I want to say is, okay, sit down. Okay, the second thing I want to say is, as, dire as director of evangelism, that means my job is to get you to invite people to come and be a part of what we're doing here at McFarland. We don't want to steal people from other churches. That, that's not what we do. We want, to, we want to steal people from no church to church because we think what's going on at McFarland is important. We think it's life-changing, not only for those people who come here and worship, but for those who catch the vision, catch the spirit, and go out into the world and change it. And that wall's opening up, and you're going to have a third more space that you're going to have to fill every week. We did good this week, but you're going to need to invite your friends so that we can continue to share the love of Jesus in very powerful ways. Okay? So those are your two things. We enter into this time of offering. And I'm so thankful for the many ways that you as a, as a community and we as a church offer up who we are and our resources uh, to make a difference in the world, to change the world, uh, to change lives that need to be changed, to share the love of Jesus Christ in tangible ways. And when you give this morning of your offering, whatever amount you give, however you give, you are allowing us to continue to live in to the call that Jesus Christ has given to us collectively. So I want to thank you. Let us have a brief word of prayer before our ushers receive the offering. God, we give thanks today for what you are doing, for this worshiping community that has shared their space, for the future of this church serving the needs of people in this community and around the world. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. And thank you for each person who gives. Receive these offerings and multiply them so we can change the world. In Christ's name.
forget I'm supposed to read scripture. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Our scripture reading today is Luke, Luke chapter 1, 39 through 45. I hear now these words. I love the, the words of Luke uh, describing uh, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's gr- greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she sang with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of the Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of, was, of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think that's me, actually. (laughs) Would you all pray with me? Gracious God, we're thankful of the way in which you chose to show up. That you didn't come like a king or a warrior. No, that would have been too obvious. That you showed up in a way that it would just take faith to believe it was really you. Help us today believe the words of the songs that we sing, that sometimes the spoken word falls short, but the songs fill the gaps. In your name we pray. Amen. This past Tuesday, we had our staff Christmas party um, where we all got together and and had lunch, and uh, Kaylee led our staff in a game called Singo. Um, uh, singo is singing bingo for those of you who couldn't figure that out. And, and what happens, instead of calling out a, out a, out a number, uh, we, we play a song. And if you have that song on your card, you get to mark it. I'm assuming you're aware of the rules of bingo. Um, and so we're playing it. But what made it so fun is beforehand, Kaylee had talked to all of our staff people and asked, what is your favorite Christmas carol? Um, and so we, we'd play these songs, and after we'd try and figure out what, what our favorite carol was, um, we'd go around trying to guess who it was, because these songs uh, spoke so much about the person who chose it. And uh, my favorite carol was uh, Winter Snow, what we just sang, and, um, and so it, was, it, was, it meant a lot to be able to hear that. Uh, but there's something about these songs that does something that strikes a chord within us that's just different than a lot of other art forms or learning methods. Because I think we've all seen those videos of how songs can transform and rediscover parts of a person who's suffering from memory loss. Singing actually, um, if you have a stutter, research has found that singing reduces the frequency of stuttering by a staggering 90 plus percent. And it's in worship where singing often opens a pathway to praise that spoken word simply doesn't walk. And now that might not be true for all of you. You might be someone who patiently just kind of endures through the singing so that you can get to the part that you really came for, which is the sermon, and you're my favorite kind of people, if that's you. Because singing and worship, it can be challenging, it can be intimidating for some of us, even though we know it's a core part of expressing our faith. Because all told, throughout Scripture, there are over 400 references to singing. There are 50 direct commands, 50 direct times in Scripture we are told that we must sing. I think it says something that the longest book in our scripture is Psalms, just a collection of the songs the first people of faith would sing. Now, every culture, all people, we, we all have songs that help us um, rhyme, that help us learn, that we can learn our alphabet, our numbers, any kind of lists, and it's true in scripture. And in Deuteronomy 31, God used music to help people remember what it meant to follow God. 
what it meant that God was with them and was leading them in a better way. It was as Israel. Israel was about the people had been wandering in the desert. They were about to enter the promised land, and God instructed, instructed Moses to teach them a song so that when the evils and troubles have come upon them, this song shall confront them as a witness, for it will live unforgotten in the mouth of their offspring. There's a New Testament scholar, his name is Gordon Fee, and he said, show me a church's songs and I'll show you what that church believes. Or as Mark Knowles puts it, we are what we sing. As Methodists, we have a rich, rich history in believing that songs are important. Charles Wesley, he wrote over 6,500 hymns. All of them are bangers, I'm sure. Him and his brother John, they produced 56 hymnals. Why not 57? I don't know. But in 56 hymnals, they covered every piece of Christian doctrine, every piece of the experiences of faith that we go through. And it wasn't because they were just trying to help people um, write worship hits, but because they wanted people so that deep inside their very souls, they were filled with the song and word of of Christ. Two Sundays ago, I was filling in for Pastor Rockford, and I was sitting on the chancel during our 8.30 sanctuary worship service, and I found myself surrounded by the Norman Philharmonic and our amazing choir as they led us through Handel's Messiah. And I was true that I was overcome. I was sitting up there, and I had this moment where I was just filled with, with awe, and, and who, how many people get the chance to not just hear Handel's Messiah, you can go to that show. How many people get a chance to just sit smack dab in the middle, surrounded by these incredible musicians and vocalists, immersed with this song that is just praising the birth of Jesus? Apparently, I got lost in the moment, and I started singing along with the choir, um, which never happens. I'm never invited to sing with the choir. Um, and a lot of people came up after, and they were like, they were like Trey, you were, you were really getting into it. You were really, you know, into singing up there, which was quite embarrassing for me. And I said, you know, it's not often that I'm drowned out by a full orchestra and choir. And so I know that it's intimidating to sing in public. I think one of the reasons it's intimidating is because we have less and less opportunities to do so in the world which is sad because singing is the most common way for us to participate, all of us, actively in worshiping a God who was born in a manger. Because song sometimes fills the gap that our words can't express. We see that in scripture with Elizabeth. She's greeted by Mary and um, and, you know, Elizabeth's husband, he, he's become, he's lost his voice. And so the fact that she sings is paralleled with a, with a mute husband. And, and we shouldn't take that too far into our households, I don't think. Um, but, but Elizabeth, she sees Mary walk up and encounters this true miracle of the incarnation in her midst, but right in the womb. This encounter with God that, that can be veiled and can seem distant becomes of the utmost proximity for Elizabeth. She is nearer to anyone but Mary, to the, to the love of God made flesh in our world. And the only appropriate response was a Holy Spirit song. That's why we sing today. That's why we sing these carols, these beloved songs during Christmas time. And I understand singing can be difficult and intimidating and even a little embarrassing when we sing in, in, in public because no one likes sounding horrible, particularly when you're surrounded by a bunch of people. But in a time where less and less people can audibly express why Christmas is so important, and people are just wandering around wondering what the big deal is about the birth of a child, Scripture points us to look towards Elizabeth, to encourage us to sing with joy, to sing what we cannot say, because these songs we sing say more about Christmas than we'll ever know.
because our words fall short. That's why we also have this um, holy sacrament, this holy act of communion, because we can talk about how Jesus comes and gives us new life, gives us a place at the seat of the table, but it means something different when we practice breaking bread, when we practice giving each other the gift of grace and receiving a gift just for free. And so we gather today, right before Jesus is born, to know that Jesus was coming uh, for something, that Jesus didn't just show up, but Jesus showed up to show us God's grace. And so we remember when Jesus took bread, blessed it, gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and broke that bread and passed it to his disciples and said, take, eat of this, all of you. This is my body. This is my life, which I give for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as the supper wore on, Jesus likewise took the cup, poured it, blessed it, gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and passed it to his disciples and said, take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood. This is my love, which I pour out for all of you, for the world for a new covenant of forgiveness of sins. Don't forget me. Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, pour out your spirit on us gathered here, both on site and online. Pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and juice, this grain of the field, this fruit of the vine, and make them be for us the bread of life and the cup of salvation so that through them we might be, for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, till Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet, for all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus first taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So this is going to be hard communion with all of you. So we're going to have to be patient, um, but as our ushers come forward, we are reminded that we participate in communion by the practice of intinction. And what that means is as you um, come forward, um, uh, the ushers are going to give you a piece of bread. We ask you to come forward with your hands out, and, and we ask that because we are reminded that we don't take God's grace. We don't have to earn God's grace, but this grace is freely given to us. We're also called to respond to that grace, and so we take that piece of bread and we dip it into the cup, signifying, reminding us that we are one with Christ in this redeeming of creation. We believe here that this table is open for everyone, that this is Christ's table, not McFarland's table or United Methodist table, but Jesus is. And so what that means is you don't have to be a member of this church or a baptized Christian to come forward. Um, you just want to have to find a new song to sing and to see if that's the song of Christmas. Whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you believed your whole life or you are just searching for something to believe in during this Christmas time, you are welcome here. Now we know intinction or gluten-filled uh, elements uh, may not be appropriate for everyone, and so here in this basket, if you'll come to this, um, to this usher who has this, we have prepackaged gluten-free communion um, as another way to live out that we truly believe um, that everyone is invited to sing this song that we're singing. Once the ushers are um, in their places, you'll be invited to come forward and um, come forward the middle, scoot your way around the outside, um, be patient. Um, but what a blessing that we have so many people here wanting to sing a song um, as expressed through this faith community of McFarland United Methodist Church. Our um, youth choir is going to help lead us in a song during this time. They're going to be singing a rendition of I Wonder As I Wander, the theme uh, for our Advent season this year. And so I invite you to come forward to receive these elements and to catch a new song. Won't you please come?
you join me in a time of prayer? We are thankful, O oh God, for once again the opportunity to not only to gather in this space and be in your presence, but also for this Advent season. As we prepare once again for the coming of the Christ child, we ask that we will be open to receive all that you have to offer us. We ask, O oh God, that we can stand with wonder at the manger. Wonder that you would love us so much that you would give of yourself to us. Wonder that, that you would trust us to carry the light of Christ into a world that is hurting and needs to know what true love really, really looks like and is about. We ask, O oh God, that you will hear the prayers that each of us shares, those that are deep within our hearts. We know, God, that during this joyful time of year, not all feel the joy. There is pain and there is hurt. There are people who struggle with, with past memories. We ask, O oh God, that, that you, through the power of your Holy Spirit, will speak to them and remind them that you are the light of the world, you are the joy, you are the hope, you are the peace, and that you walk with us. We remember our brothers and sisters around the world, those who believe like we do and those who don't. We pray, God, that humanity can quit being so terrible to each other. We hope for something different. We, we desire it. And sometimes, God, sometimes we know that the only difference in the world is going to be the difference that we choose to make. God, I think about the words in, in John chapter 1. The Word became flesh. Jesus became the example of love to humanity. And as the light of the world, you then pass that light on to each and every one of us. And that is a tremendous responsibility. That if we choose to take it, we don't walk alone. We know that you walk with us. But we still have to choose it. And I can only pray for myself today. I, I can only pray that, that I can be the light of the world. And I would pray, God, that collectively we will choose to be the light of the world. Hear our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. I'm in sanctuary, so like, I'm sure that's an excuse. Yeah. I want to invite you to the ribbon cutting over at the food pantry, and if you're not able to stay uh, for that, we will be doing an open house later on in January when our operations are up and running. But once again, thank you. It's my joy and pleasure to send you out into the world, to go through those doors and share the light of Christ, to love people who have been unloved, to care for those who don't feel like they're cared for, to share words of hope and wisdom to a world that desperately needs it, to love your family, to love your enemies, to care for those around you, and to go be Christ-like as you walk out those doors. Go in peace. You guys are dismissed. <laughs>